गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू गुड मॉर्निंग ओके सो वी हैड अ ब्रीफ इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ ई पी आर इन द लास्ट क्लास एंड इट इज एज आई टोल्ड यू वंस यू हैव अंडरस्टूड एन एम आर द न्यूक्लियर रेजोनेंस न्यूक्लियर मैग्नेटिक रेजोनेंस देन यू कैन ऑल्सो अंडरस्टैंड द इलेक्ट्रॉन magnetic resonance paramagnetic resonance that way so that's uh, it becomes much easier so we have we already have done a lot a lot of things in, in the nmr so the only difference that we found here uh, is is that the appearance of the spectrum that is typically recorded and uh, so the absorption as always you find in any case is like a uh, this kind of profile uh, a peak appearing like this and then uh, it is you take the first derivative of each and you get this kind of profile so the point to understand is that the maximum of the peak is here where in the first derivative it will be having zero value so that's how you understand it and locate the things on a scale uh, of up, on a scale of this uh, field okay so at which field there is maximum absorption the in the derivative spectrum the slope will be zero so this is the point slope that you see so the graph looks like uh, and that's what that was as i told you it is largely historical reasoning rather than any uh, much of the science the science has evolved over the period of time the instrumentation has evolved uh, has gone much more transformation and but still the old things are still continuing the appearance of spectrum and it is to in the early days it was an effort in an effort to uh, overcome this uh, field dependence of the uh, magnet uh, baseline shift in spectrometer that was a problem and it, they found that it is better to take the first derivative rather than relying on the first uh, this absorption spectrum as obtained by the instrument uh, obtained by performing this spectroscopy so we still continue with this uh, the spectrum so you apply a field the electron uh, when the system has unpaired electron a molecule uh, you call it radical uh, so a radical or a metal complex and so depending on the magnitude of the field the separation will be like this and so if you allow something the this uh, microwave radiation to fall upon it uh, you direct a beam of microwave on this sample there will be absorption and it will move to from one spin state to the another spin state so which uh, so it is the beta and alpha you know now beta alpha like this alpha is in the higher energy state so this is the so because of this is the absorption and absorption occurs and this absorption signal will appear like this initially and the first derivative will appear look like this so exactly the point where you have peak you will have zero value over here so this is how you locate in the spectrum and the difference between the two pairs uh, alpha and beta can be given by this g value so i told you the g value initially that we talked about uh, in the magnetic resonance was for free electron uh, the relativistic effect taking into account the fluctuation of the magnetic field so but the magnetic fluctuations will also involve now in this case when it is a part of a molecule the immediate environment which is affected by the nature of nucleus present the nature of other electrons around it uh, so all those things will affect it and so g value is likely to change 
so a molecular when you're talking about a radical uh, the local magnetic field that is induced by the immediate environment the nucleus the other electrons that is present that will change the g value and so the g value can be uh, now we do not write g e was the specifically for free electron this g e means free electron now when we are talking about radicals and other thing we only write g and omit the subscript e so, okay so the g value of a radical is denoted by this simple just the well g uh, and it is it will represent the molecular environment in which that particular electron is present okay so it will so now the way we have been visualizing it is that when you have a magnetic field of light you have a lot of electrons around the um, electron to be observed and it there will be it will uh, so a magnet applied magnetic field will make these electrons move in, uh, in a circle circular path or something like that so that is uh, you, you can set, say that a current is set up the electrons circulate and you, a current is set up so there are two things that we in the g value will depend upon one how easily that current can be set up two what is the strength of the magnetic field due to this current that is generated so ease so two things the ease how easily you are setting up the current can be set up uh, and number two the strength of the magnetic field arising out of that <coughs> circulating current so these two things so if you if it is uh, if you find that uh, in a radical it is much easier to uh, uh, circulate the electrons it may make up a current so that will have higher g value if you find it is difficult to make the ele electrons circulate in that system it will be small g value and so based on that we can uh, understand so this is the so during this circulation of electrons that we are talking about the current that it's a uh, current like thing that is made to flow that is shown through these circles so you see in that current so it makes this inherent thing that is uh, something that is there is that it is it makes use of the vacant orbital lying above like in the energy level in the energy diagram if you have vacant orbital of low lying energy it is the spacing should not be much different um, um, too large then it can make use of it the excited state orbitals and the currents can flow it will be easier to generate so one thing that we understand right now that the circulation of electron that the external magnetic field will generate uh, the circulation that will be induced will depend on this uh, uh, availability of orbitals excited state orbital of low energy excited state energy excited state orbital if it is available uh, the energy gap is less then it will be easier to induce the current the start of the current the ease of ease will be good uh, prop e e proportional to the separation so higher is the separation less will be the ease smaller is the separation greater is the ease smaller separation smaller del e greater ease okay ease of of what uh, inducing current or when we are talking about current we mean that we are uh, uh, making the electrons circulate around in a, in this kind of path that we are talking about so it is this is what we mean that it is inversely proportional the g value will be uh, what we 
when we simply look at it from the con uh, conceptually we find that it it should be inversely proportional to the uh, availab availability of this uh, vacant orbital excited state orbital if uh, and the energy difference that it has so so this sorry so this thing is so this is the only the one aspect that we talked about then the second thing that i i was ta talking about is the strength of the magnetic field the current has been induced and what is the strength of this uh, this uh, circulating electrons uh, the magnetic fields that this circulating electrons will generate so that idea you get from the spin orbit coupling constant xi uh, so this spin orbit molecular spin orbit coupling constant will be important so higher the value of spin orbit coupling the spin angular momentum the orbital angular momentum both interact to give you a net uh, uh, angular momentum and so a net magnetic moment so that will be important so in taken together you can say that g value uh, will be directly proportional to xi and it will also be directly inversely proportional to del e so xi is the coupling constant uh, spin orbit coupling constant and del e is, is the uh, energy difference homo lumo lowest on occupied molecular orbital so this energy difference will determine the g value so higher the spin orbit coupling constant higher will be the g smaller the difference between homo lumo gap uh, homo lumo energy levels uh, that also will make the g value you know, larger so these are the point of view so it will be somewhere so the initial value that you got for uh, a free electron that will be altered that will change slightly because of these these factors and given by this particular amount so organic if we talk about organic radicals the g value is around very close to 2.027 for inorganic radicals have g values in the range of 1.9 to 2.1 and taking that further, if you talk about paramagnetic D metal complexes, that the range is much bigger. Uh, it ranges from 0 to 6 because, uh, or because you know, the del E, the, uh, because the D orbitals split and the energies can vary with ligands, with the interaction with ligands in a much broader sense. And so you have a, a wide range of the G values that is possible for parameters from 0 to 6 so g value is uh, also uh, it is so it is <clears throat> so it is also de depend uh, so when we talk about how circulation of the elect inducing a current that involves circulating the electrons along a path so depending on the molecular shape the electron cloud how it how it is uh, oriented the g value will differ so it is so g along x g along y g along z axis might differ so magnitude of so you will the g value tends to be an isotropic that is having if you take a molecule there might be cases when the it is not a spherical, a spherical distribution of the electrons it is not a symmetric distribution along certain direction the electron density will be more and you will be getting a bigger current generated in other direction the electron density will be less and you will get a less current generated so the g value so accordingly the magnetic field that will generated through that electronic current that will also be different 
So magnitude will depend on orientation of the radical with respect to the applied field. So, uh, so it is also, so again it will be also important to see whether if molecules are rotating, they are moving very fast. So that is what I earlier introduced in an NMR case also, the tumbling of the molecules. So if the molecule is moving very rapidly, getting uh, inverted upside down, things, uh, uh, getting. so in that kind of motion, if it is happening very rapidly, only the, uh, you won't get the anisotropic thing. Uh, the G value will be only observed, uh, it will be a time averaged again, in, if in, it is tumbling rapidly, only time averaged picture will be obtained. Of G, so it will be there will be no difference between X, Y, and Z axis if you measure the G along these directions. But if you trap that radical in a solid, radical trapped in solids, the molecule is not able to move around, and then the anisotropic effects uh, you will get anisotropy value of the G can be seen very easily. So, so in the Sorry. Hmm. Next. Hmm. 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 No, uh, organic or inorganic radical, it will, you have other ways to identify the elements present. Whether it's organic or inorganic, that you can do uh, um, analysis like CHN and other things. So it, it is not that you are doing EPR in isolation. If something, you, are, you might get 2.0027 value for an inorganic, for organic radical. Then, of, of course, the EPR will not be able to distinguish between the two. So it is just for the magnetic aspect you are looking at it. You already have the, the mass spectroscopy, the CHN, the other techniques to distinguish whether what frag, molecular fragment it is, right? And then you perform this EPR to know that uh, how that fragment behaves magnetically magnetic response it is not i am not saying that you you can you are able to identify the radical but it is only the facts are being stated that in in case of organic radicals there is not much variation you see it is 2.02 so for the entire organic system we are saying that it is very close to 2.0 so there is there is not much uh, width in uh, in terms of the values are always around this. In organic radicals 1.9 to 2.1. So of course if you are getting some very close to 2.0 you might get in the case of inorganic also then you have to resort to other techniques. Okay. So, so usually it is not done in isolation you always perform some preliminary things to elemental analysis or things so you know what elements are present um, and then you start the other characterization. So uh, what I was, to, yeah, I was, so now, uh, so once we have understood a little bit of uh, these G values, so I, uh, then we can move to this uh, important segment of hyperfine structure. So it is similar to what we have seen uh, in previously in NMR case, the splitting pattern, the coupling of, in, in NMR you saw the coupling of nucleus with uh, other uh, magnetic moment of one nucleus uh, interacting with the other magnetic moment of the nearby nuclei. In a similar fashion here, what will happen, it is refers to the interaction of electrons electrons with the nuclei and how it will affect <coughs> that interaction affect the energy levels 
so it is quite similar to what we have already learned in NMR so you can uh, it is just that that was nucleus interacting with nucleus here electron interacting with the nucleus and then we uh, so we think of a magnetic dipole moments of the nucleus that interacts with the electron spin so electron spin generates a dipole magnetic dipole so it is in interacting with the magnetic dipole of the nucleus spin so uh, so so electron spin uh, interact with the, with the nucleus uh, nucleus spin of the radical so that is how we see it and uh, uh, so, single hydrogen nucleus, if you indicate uh, nucleus, so proton in a radical such as CH3 radical or CH2 radical, you can think of. So, the free electron, the un sorry, the unpaired electron that we are talking about will be interacting with the proton. So, in that case, the proton spin, the will which is a source of magnetic field of course it will it is a it has a magnetic moment so it will generate a magnetic field and that will affect the electrons uh, so basically the overall field will be changed so local field that will be generated will be the this is the external applied field external field magnetic field and it is changed by an amount which is given by this a into m i so m i refers to the you know it is the magnetic quantum number of a nucleus and a is the coupling constant so these two things so m i can be plus half minus half and the hyperfine coupling constant is a so these two things uh, define the overall uh, so so externally applied field B is has an additional component now added to it for by due to the interaction uh, of the nuclear nucleus so how the nucleus is oriented so plus half or minus half tells you how the nuclear spin is oriented and accordingly it will affect the magnetic field that the electron is going to experience so the electron under consideration is uh, having a modified magnetic field locally which is given by this equation so if mi is plus half then you can the equation that we just discussed for energy of the system so g value mu Bohr magneton into b and so the b the B this is what you have you are multiplying basically with the local B local okay so this is the same thing that we are putting whole thing the expanded form we are writing it here right so G G value mag Bohr magneton into the magnetic field which magnetic field the local magnetic field which is modified by the presence of magnetically active nucleus so or we can write like this you can rearrange the equation and the b uh, is given by this value so the resonance condition can be identified you apply a magnetic field of this strength given by this equation then the radical the electron in the radical will be under resonance so the so uh, so so other half the other possibility is that the spin is oriented nuclear spin is having minus half as the magnetic quantum number and so the resonance condition will be changed by the same amount and you will it will uh, resonate at a field <laughs> Sorry. So, if you are doing a scanning, continuous scanning of the field, you are changing the field continuously. Then, and you have a fixed source of microwave. In that case, it will come into resonance at a field of this value, at a lesser value. So, this is high. This is less. So, so overall, 
it will look like you will have a force so initially one single electron it has alpha and beta two sets of energy levels that were defined initially now it will further split due to interaction of this thing into four levels and so now uh, you are getting two instead of one line you will observe two lines uh, and uh, and that is what we say that it is and this separation will be equivalent to a the coupling constant so hyperfine coupling constant constant so this is so so instead of a single line now you will get so this uh, what we represent here is that initially it is alpha beta the state of the which are of equal energy in absence of any magnetic field as you increase the magnetic field so this direction represents that with application of magnetic field this energy changes gradually this change in energy of the spins uh, yeah how so so accordingly you can have two different types of transitions possible so due to this hyperfine interaction so there are four energy levels in place of original two as a result spectrum has two lines and that is represented by so again we can follow the stick model that is rep represented here no hyperfine splitting one stick and that stick splits into two when a proton is present due to the hyperfine interactions and this is how you interpret so equal intensity and the two lines are obtained of equal intensity this is equal intensity so two lines of equal intensity should be obtained intensity at two different values of magnetic field resonance occurs when the separation of states uh, matches this so So diagonal lines is to show the energy of the state as applied when the field is applied and the resonance conditions are indicated through these lines, the arrows that green arrows that you see. Okay, so the microwave photon must match that energy difference. So the splitting pattern we can further work out more on that. Suppose if uh, there is a 14 in atom in the radical so you have electron in if it is a radical it has an electron and it interacts with a 14 n nitrogen nucleus so the quantum number i is equal to 1 so what do you expect i 1 means you have mi possible values are plus 1 0 so mi will be having minus 1 so the orientation of the vector would be like so if you have viewing on a cone then you can have either this orientation so vector in three dimension would be such that it has some value on, along this or it can have it can be oriented like this or it can be oriented like this on the third cone so so plus 1 0 minus 1 so this is what we were expecting sorry so th this is a cone that you can draw is in a similar fashion something like this so the arrows on this cone so this is to represent the that z component is same whether you place and the z component is zero when the vector the spin angular momentum vector lies along this line so if this is the x y z z x and y so this will be zero and this is your uh, the magnetic angular uh, so angular momentum vector so this is how we so if depending on the orientation of the vector this uh, you can have three different 
positions in three different orientations so it can interact in three different ways and accordingly the energy state spin state will be affected the spin state of the electron will be affected and it will split into three so you will have three possible so because it has three possible spin orientation e spin is <coughs> uh, will contribute to the signal and you will get total of 2i plus 1 lines in the spectrum all being of equal intensity because all are having there's equal probability of all the three uh, spin orientations so there's if there's a large number of magnetic nuclei present in the radical each one contributes and so you can go on adding that effect as uh, the way we did in nmr so first you split it in uh, by the inter interaction due to one nucleus and then each of those lines will be further split by the interaction with the other nuclei so one by one you move on and you generate a very uh, in intricate this uh, pattern of hyperfine splitting so as in case of methyl protons and methylene protons some of the hyperfine lines will become coincident and you will have a larger intensity at that particular point so that is what we learned in the pascal's triangle you, we have done that earlier same thing we will apply here so this is an example uh, this is a typical spectrum for benzene benzene radical anion and you, you, you can see clearly here so as i told you to uh, you will get hyperfine lines <coughs> so we are getting yeah if you have n number of as i told you if there are n number of equivalent protons then you will get n plus one hyperfine lines so you are having six here uh, then you can six plus one the seven lines are appearing one two three four five six seven and each having uh, so intensity is in this pattern so this is the same stick model that we have followed for nmr in a similar fashion we can we are getting the pattern the pascal triangle pattern okay so n n equivalent nuclei with quantum number i so this high number of hyperfine hyperfine lines that you will obtain is given by 2 n i plus 1 with an intensity distribution that is uh, you know by very well you can obtain through Pascal triangle so the questions uh, that could be asked is on these lines uh, so you have you you should be able to predict you should be able to tell what kind of hyperfine structure you will get in an EPR spectrum if the the, the information like this is given so example uh, here a radical contains 14 n nucleus i is equal to 1 hyperfine constant is 1.61 millitesla and two equivalent protons of so obviously protons have i is equal to half with hyperfine constant of 0 0.35 millitesla so see here the interaction is going to be with this electron angular momentum uh, will interact with the nucleus of uh, nitrogen it will also interact with the uh, two protons and so you have to consider it one by one the idea is to take the it becomes easier if you take the larger one first although you can take it either way but uh, that will be more complicated and you may might, might make mistakes at that time so always take the uh, something which has a higher hyperfine constant first so you will obtain a greater splitting uh, the, the width the of the the separation between the two lines will be much greater because it has a higher coupling constant and the equivalent the other constant is much smaller so that will be drawn so this is how point that we keep in mind so we do it in one by one so this is the pattern so first you take the 1.61 millitesla 
that is the interaction uh, with nitrogen so split into three okay i is equal to one so you have corresponding to this you are getting three one two and three splitting okay and then corresponding to i is equal to half you will have because so there will be two so that means there will be it will split into two and because there are two such equivalent protons so one equivalent proton uh, first proton interaction and then second proton interacts and you have the pattern goes on you stretch uh, make it further and so you will get 1 is to 2 is to 1 1 is to 2 is to 1 1 is to 2 is to 1 at so you see this kind of pattern appearing for radical which has nitrogen which also has two equivalent protons such as ch2 so in ch2 uh, you can or uh, yeah so that kind so <clears throat> so largest split, split hyperfine splitting is taken first that it is suggested only uh, it is not to say that it will affect your result if you start with lower one but it is more convenient if you start with the largest uh, uh, nucleus with having the largest hyperfine splitting constant so uh, that's what has been done and one first you get this one and then you further split the lines to get doublets of having separation of 0.35 milli tesla so this so the spectrum consists of three equivalent triplets that's what we can see and in a similar fashion you can answer another question if uh, mm, yeah you can take it as assignment a radical which has three 14 n nucleus present so it is simple case first split into three lines then each of those three lines will further split into three lines and then again another nitrogen is there so three such nitrogen nuclei is are present and so you can go on splitting it further and further and you will get a pattern like this one two three so first 14 in the first nitrogen nucleus then second nitrogen nucleus and the third so after interaction with the third so one two three so three you continue the pattern in each one uh, one after the other uh, gets splitted into three such three lines and so some of them will be coincident and there you will have so where it is co coincident you have uh, the intensity will be more and so so this is the stick model in through which we can illustrate the uh, idea how we can find the uh, how uh, splitting pattern and the intensity of each of these lines so we can predict the how many lines will be observed we can also predict what should be the intensity of each such lines that will be observed in the signal so the nuclear spin uh, it is so hyperfine structure of an epi spectrum is what we say is a kind of fingerprint and it will help you identify the radicals the g value may not help you much easily but a combination of these two things uh, when you look at the hyperfine structure you look at the g values obtained uh, or things like that then it becomes much easier in uh, in combination of the two three things that you can check uh, you can predict what is there and plus as i told you there are other techniques which can tell you about elements present so it is the magnitude of the splitting also depends on the distribution of unpaired electrons near the magnetic nuclei so yeah so you, you can use this epr spectrum to learn about the molecular orbital you can uh, so electron distribution 
around a particular nucleus can be understood and so you can learn about the molecular orbital occupied by the unpaired electron so in that sense it is very helpful so hyperfine splitting for example uh, if we take for benzene it is 0.375 millitesla so it has so imagine it is one electron which is delocalized over the entire ring so when i am viewing one um, so this h we are talking about interaction with h which is magnetically active there are six hydrogen nuclei uh, which are present and the electron is delocalized over the entire thing it is negative charged elect one electron so it is that electron density that one electron we can imagine is now divided spread over six carbon atoms so it is each of this electron that we are talking about is a result of delocalized p orbitals uh, p orbitals that is overlapping uh, which is each, each other so it is only the one sixth of the electron density that is present on one carbon atom so it represents only the one sixth of the elec electron electrons spin density present on one carbon and that gives rise to this uh, splitting hyperfine splitting of 0.375 millitesla then suppose if that electron is solely lying on that one carbon it should be six times that value the splitting pattern if suppose there is uh, so when we extrapolate it and try to understand that can we find whether the electron is localized on one carbon atom or it is delocalized over a number of carbon atoms by epr yes so that is what we are discussing here that one electron delocalized over six is giving us a splitting pattern which is separate lying separated by this so suppose if it is lying on just one carbon is having all this electron density one electron is solely lying over there then the splitting should be six times the value 2.25 so this consideration helps us in identifying whether uh, what is the delocalization or whether the electrons are delocalized or not okay so if the one one electron is solely lying on the carbon atom this is the kind of splitting that should we should obtain so we can get this uh, in an arrow uh, so when we are uh, analyze the aromatic radicals this thing is helpful uh, so we know the hyperfine splitting constant a this is the value then the probability and the spin density is rho then they, the splitting can be correlated to each to these things so this is there is an equation that is uh, given by called McConnell equation so the splitting the hyperfine constant whether you will obtain 2.25 or so it can range from 0.375 to 2.25 and that can be given by can be related to the spin density present at the carbon and q is the maximum value that can be obtained so if the spin density corresponding to one electron is solely present on that particular you are getting the maximum value of q when the density is less you get a fraction of that uh, value as a so the spin so hyperfine splitting constant is related to this uh, spin density into the q the maximum value of the hyperfine constant okay so uh, when it is delocalized it is the one sixth spin density so one by six times you get 0.375 as the value a is the hyperfine splitting constant observed for the h atom which is attached and so this kind of cons uh, this considerations help us understand the e uh, electron distribution profile in a 
radical so this is the example of naphthalene minus na na radical anion naphthalene with a minus sign so there are two groups of four equivalent protons two groups of four equivalent protons one this one so this is one set so there are one four five eight one one two three four five six seven eight uh one four five eight one four five and eight so these are one type having a splitting of this value and two three six seven positions have a splitting of hyperfine splitting given by point, point one at three minutes so now applying that McConnell equation you can find that the densities are accordingly related in this so when in the two cases the elect electron densities that uh, is 0.22 times the original uh, factor and 0 0.08 times the original value if, if it is compared to a one electron localized at one carbon like that so uske comparison mein kitna kam ho ja raha hai uska idea aapko mil raha hai okay so 0 0.490 so applying that factor a into q by q a is equal to q into rho we can find this electron density present so the similar way we can answer for uh, spin density if it is given if the factor is given over here in the same way that so if you are given uh, this spin density is given to you then you can find the splitting constant so this is the spin density so there are three different types of uh, protons uh, present in different types of environment that will be electron density will be presented in a different ways over this carbon three type of carbon having in terms of electron density that they have and so we can find out the spin density in each of them predict the and predict the form of spectrum so these are something that you can do you try to do it at home then we can discuss it further in the next class. So, thank you for this.